hello everyone. I will be presenting one of the questions in the sprint round that you just did. And this is gonna be question 24. So let's take a look at the problem and we'll get to solving it. Let X and Y be integers such that zero is less than X, which is less than Y, which is less than 10. Given that it has exactly four positive integer divisors, what is the sum of all possible values of x to the four, my, y to the four minus x to the four? So we know that this quantity has four positive integer divisors. So if you know your number theory, you might recognize the number of divisors that another number has is quite a common thing that comes up in contests. So let me first explain how this trick works. If you're given a number, let's say, for example, the number 12, and I want, we want to count the number of positive integers that divide this evenly, what you first do is prime factorize this number, which means you break it down into the a product of prime numbers. And in this case, we discovered that 12 is two times two times three. Now, what you do now is you take a look at all of the exponents of these prime numbers, which in this case are two and one. Now you wanna take each of these exponents and add one to each of them. And then you multiply this together to get six. So um, the number 12 has six positive integer divisors. So when we're given any number, you just prime factorize it, add one to each of the exponents and then multiply. So now let's take a look at this quantity y to the 4 minus x to the 4, which should have four positive integer divisors. We can first write this as a difference of squares, which is a very common algebraic strategy. So we're going to write it as a product like this. And you notice that this term right here is another difference of squares. So we can break this down yet again. So I've shown that y to the four minus x to the four is a product of these three terms. So now let's think about what it means for a number to have four positive integer divisors. There are only a few ways that this could happen, and I'll tell you what they are. You could have a number be a product of two primes, where p is prime, our prime numbers. In this case, each of these exponents is one. And so the trick tells us that this number will have four positive integer divisors. And another way that you could have four positive integer divisors is if you have a prime and then you cube it, because now you just add one to it and we get four. And as it turns out, the only way that a number can have four positive integer divisors is if it is the product of two primes or if it's the cube of a prime number. So let's keep this in mind as we look at the product that we have on this side. So we have y minus x times y plus x times y squared plus x squared. And you notice that we have three things that we're multiplying together. If all of these three things are greater than one, then we will have a product of more than two prime numbers because each of these numbers will then be a product of some prime numbers. And we cannot have more than two prime numbers multiplied together. So what this tells us is that one of these numbers should be equal to one. Because if we have one of these equal to one, then, for example, we could have the second uh, part of the product be equal to a prime, and we can have the other part equal to another prime. Or we could have one of them be a prime, and we can have one of them be the square of that prime. But in any case, we need to have one of these quantities be equal to one. And you'll notice that because each of these are positive integers, x and y are positive integers, that y minus x is less than 
y plus x, and also that happens to be less than x squared plus y squared plus x squared. So this means that if one of them has to be one, then this number has to be equal to one. Y minus x is equal to one. And this is a key observation because it allows us to restrict the size of options that we're checking. So before I had to check all the numbers x and y that were in this condition, but now my search is restricted to just a few options. In particular, we can have x and y be 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, or 8, 9. And these are our only possible combinations of x and y. So now we need to decide, should we try to get a product that looks like this or a product that looks like this? And another observation you can make is that this quantity cannot be the square of this quantity because the square of x plus y is equal to y squared plus 2yx plus x squared, which is definitely greater than what we have in this part right here. So because of that, I know that this option cannot happen, which leaves me with this last case. So now what my goal is to find the number of is to find the pairs of x and y in this list where the sum y plus x is a prime and where the sum y squared plus x squared is another prime. So now it's just the case of going through the list and checking if both of those expressions are prime. So 1 plus 2 is 3, which is prime, and 1 squared plus 2 squared is 5, which is also prime. So this is good. 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 squared plus 3 squared is 13, which is also prime. 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25, which is not prime. 4 plus 5 is 9, which is not prime. So this also fails. Now 5 and 6, the sum is 11, and the sum of their squares is, I believe that is uh, 61, which is also prime. So this is also good. Now 6 squared plus 7 squared ends in a 5. So that's also not prime. Uh, 7 plus 8 is 15. That's not prime. 8 squared plus 9 squared, that answer ends in a 5. So that's also no, no good. So this leaves us with only three possibilities. We have, uh, sorry, we have 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 5 and 6. So now all we need to do is calculate y to the 4 minus x to the 4 for each of those. And... Um, just to save a little bit of time, if you've already calculated both of these quantities, x plus y and y squared plus x squared, you can just multiply these together. So that gives you 15. This right here gives you, that gave you 5 times 13, which is 65. And this gives you 671. So now, if you add all of these together, that will give you the final answer, which I believe like did my math correct should be 751 that's your final answer hey this is tim hope you're enjoying our videos if so you know what to do like subscribe turn on notifications all that sort of thing but what i'd really want to invite you to do is to send us an email at media at mathleague.org tell us which problems you'd like to see us cover next in our video series take care and see you in the next video